All right. Hey, Clojan. Uh, thanks for making time to be on today. Uh, as you know, we, we ha we're opening up the enrollment for the association and, and a lot of PhDs and postdocs, they, they have questions about whether or not a program like this will be worth it. And so we'd like to go back to previous members who have successfully transitioned into industry like yourself and uh, you know, ask them what their thought process was, what benefits they got, and, and if it was worth it. So thanks for being here. Thank you for uh, asking me to <clears throat> give my contribution and my experience about this because I'm very, very happy uh, with um, overall the, the experience of the Chiki Scientist Association. Um, I have to say, first of all, that um, for me, joining the um, association was the perfect time when I was trying to uh, get into industry and it was uh, the perfect place at the perfect time to start learning how to effectively transition. Uh, mm. into, the, into, into the private sector. I, I wanted uh, an industry job. I was dreaming about that and I didn't know how to start. And then the association helped me um, learning those skills mm. that uh, allowed me to efficient, efficiently transition into industry later on. Well, hey, thanks. That's great. And uh, yeah, so just, just to dig in a little bit deeper, uh, you said that it came at the right time. So maybe you can talk about, you know, why did you want to, well, first tell everybody what industry role you transitioned into and then tell people why you wanted to transition into industry. So, um, first of all, um, at the moment I work as a senior scientist at Estelle Lauder Companies in New York and uh, it's, um, it's a great work environment. It's um, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, I just recently finished the last day of my three months of uh, probation a three months trial period and you uh, got really good feedback about that. Um, it's different from the, the type of uh, educational background I come from because I, I studied um, biotechnology and first in, uh, in university and then neuroscience so I was somehow directed to have an academic path but um, right now I work for uh, products that will end up in, in, in cosmetics yeah. so it's totally the opposite but in terms of um, how the, um, the transition was and why did I end up uh, in SL order rather than just in Roche or Novartis? That's, uh, that's a question that um, I asked myself first and I said, do I really want to spend 30 years working on a drug target or better I spend 18 months working on a product that will make it in a patent and potentially in a uh, best uh, sale? Well, yeah, and you bring up a good point. I think you bring up a couple good points there. Uh, number one, that you didn't even know that you'd be able to transition into this kind of a role given your background. Like you exactly. thought you're going the academic route and now you're doing something completely different. And a lot of people who are considering this are like, well, I've been on this academic path. Can I actually transition into an industry role that I have no experience in? And the answer is for well, you, yes. Let, let me tell you this. Um, it's very um, difficult for a fresh PhD to think, what am I going to do now that I finished my PhD? I only know to do this. Mm. But if you dig deeper and then you go um, and you, you would like to see um, what, if, uh, what a PhD teaches you, yes. how to transition effectively yes. any kind of skill into industry. And for me, what it was uh, uh, very shocking at the same time, it's... Uh, it's very, nowadays very, very common, and I, I really appreciate that uh, having learned this into the association is that uh, the soft skills count the most more than the, uh, the, the hard skills. Yes. Because everybody's able to perform an experiment, mm. but the way you present it, the way you uh, um, uh, express yourself, and the way you, uh, you can vehicle your message, mm. this is something else. Because you, you should be able to talk to a variety of people that have no clue about your project or about the experiment and explain that. And this is a skill that uh, any PhD can, can have and, yeah. and can do that. No, that's great. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so so you, this is one of the skills that you learned in the association. You learned how important it was and how to, um, I mean, you're a good communicator, but you learned how to really hone that skill. What are some of the other benefits you got from joining the association, whether it's the, the private group or some things that specifically helped you with your transition? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure. So, um, first of all, when I joined the association, the first benefits that I got were to how to effectively network, mm. how to start building a strong presence on LinkedIn. Um, we, we forget that we have a LinkedIn profile, but we never ever go and nurture that profile, mm. which is really important because um, as a professionals, to end up in a company that is uh, in a totally different field than your field, you have to be able to connect 
with the right people and to attract their attention. And in order to do this, um, what I learned from right after I joined the, um, the association, how to um, start building a, a resume, send a resume, and have a strong LinkedIn profile, send um, uh, inquiries to, um, about job offers or yes. potential interviews to recruiters and uh, send the a resume with a strong visual center and therefore get their attention and how they can um, somehow uh, follow up there and yes. after that and then get uh, an, an interview right. either through Skype or face-to-face -face interview. Yeah, and you, and you had some great interviews, like you said previously, with some very you know uh, well-known companies, uh, very big uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, you know, and, and one thing that I really noticed about you when you enrolled is that you were very active in the group and you, you shared a lot and you gave back. And, and so maybe just the last question to you is, you know, what is this, the value of this private group to you as you're doing your transition? What was unique about the Cheeky Scientist Association group? Something, you know, what are some things you saw in that group that really benefited you? Um, first of all, the um, great support in terms of uh, positive critical feedback about uh, joining the group and guiding you in every step because you know we're, we're humans we we don't know where to start so when I wanted to uh, to get through the interview or I wanted to upload my CV um, I didn't know how to do it so I was following the conversations mm -hmm. and uh, I asked questions and there was not I didn't have to wait um, an hour or it was just a minute, a fraction of, uh, of, of, of a second that every, some, somebody would be there to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And this was extremely, extremely important for me to get fast the information that I wanted yes. from people that have um, a PhD and they were in the same situation and somehow they were helping each other. And this was extremely re rewarding. Yeah, it's a, it's a very rare thing, and uh, you were a big part of that, Claude. And so thank you so much for taking the time to come back. And uh, thank you. You know, now that thank you're a big guy in New York, Estee Lauder, uh, congratulations, and I uh, look thank forward you. to watching your continued career success. Thank you very much, Isaiah. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're welcome.